Today, I rank six V8 diesel engines made this century for passenger cars. This means no truck engines. Instead of having a tier one, I would point out that a V8 diesel is seldom a good idea, much less in light duty vehicles. Diesel is much less limited by displacement per cylinder. An inline six would be stronger thanks to seven main bearings instead of five, simpler and more serviceable at uh, the same displacement. When very large displacement is desired, manufacturers preferred the stronger V12. Large diesel engines in marine and uh, stationary applications can have even more cylinders. A V8 is very rarely a good choice. The six engines on this list are there only because their manufacturers could not fit an inline six of the same displacement into small engine compartments they are designed for. First in tier two is Toyota's 1VD 4.5 liter with single all twin turbo variants. This engine has a strong nodular graphite cast iron block and a forged steel crankshaft. It uses an air to air intercooler strangely mounted on top of the engine. It also uses a unique timing setup with two intermediary gears and two timing chains that drive the, the intake cams. The exhaust cams are driven by gears from the intake cams. Its oil pumps are also driven by gears. All these make the 1VD rather reliable. Its downside is its limited performance, even in terms of torque output. In my opinion, it still deserves this spot because most engines on this list are simply unreliable. The 1VD is primarily found in the J70 and J200 Land Cruiser. Next up is the bi-turbo V8 made by Ford for Land Rover in the 2000s. Originally, the engine had a displacement of 3.6 liters. This was increased to 4.4 liters after three years of production. Both were marketed as TDV8, but uh, the 4.4 version is appreciably more powerful and much more reliable. In fact, the 3.6 liter alone should be in tier three. This engine used compacted uh, graphite iron block that is lighter yet stronger than traditional cast iron. When fitted into the Range Rover for two generations, the 4.4 TDVA was uh, about the most reliable unit on offer. Rounding out tier two is Volkswagen's 4.0 and uh, 4.2 TDI, displacing 3.9 and uh, 4.1 liters respectively, despite the naming. The 4.0 TDI was the replacement for Volkswagen's old 3.3 liter TDI with um, timing chain. In fact, it bore much resemblance to Volkswagen's V6, V8 and V10 engines of the era uh, in its use of accessories driven by the timing chain. Unfortunately, this also meant that the timing chain, were, timing chain was its weak point as the same setup must cope with more severe vibrations characteristic of diesel engines. The engine was pulled out to 4.2 liters just two years after initial introduction with a slight decrease in compression ratio. The 4.2 TDI is considerably uh, is considered slightly more reliable. In other aspects, this engine is quite comparable to the Ford unit above with compacted graphite iron block and the forged steel crankshaft. It uses two side mounted air to air intercoolers. The reason that Volkswagen has the timing chain at the back of the engine and uses it to drive accessories is to fit the engine fully in front of the front axle, as has always been the case with Audis. This measure makes the front of the engine narrower. Starting with tier three, I have BMW's M67 bi-turbo engine. Originally, it displaced 3.9 liters 
but was named M67D40. This had a cast iron block. Towards the end of、uh, M67's production run, it grew to 4.4 liters and gained an aluminum block. The 4.4 liter unit is appreciably more powerful. As one would expect, neither is particularly reliable. However, the M67 shares much of its technology with the M57 inline six turbo diesel, which is about as reliable as a BMW engine gets. On the downside, the M67 being considerably heavier and much harder to work on, is only slightly more powerful than the M57. This is why BMW did not sell much of these, and、uh, fewer have survived to now. <laughs> not to be outmatched by BMW, Mercedes introduced its own V8 diesel engine a year later with the OM628. This engine uses a unique 75-degree bank angle in order to fit into the engine bay of the E-Class. The design choice necessitated a balanced shaft as well as split crank pins. The engine also has the honor or dishonor of being the world's first all-aluminum V8 diesel engine. Strangely, it uses an air-to-air, air-to-water. Air to water intercooler mounted at the front of the engine, right behind the radiator. Overall, the the engine is considered somewhat reliable, but the design features listed above make it a rather weak choice. It also doesn't help that the engine is barely more powerful than the exceptional OM613 and OM648 inline six turbo diesels of the same era. The OM629 was an updated version that is considerably more powerful. Oh, no, not considerably, appreciably more powerful, but very, but、uh, almost identical in design. <laughs> Last is Volkswagen's EA898 4-liter hot V bi-turbo V8 with 48-volt mild hybrid system and an electric super supercharger. Without doubt, this is the most advanced engine on this list. It is the only engine with a hot V setup with inverted heads and、uh, turbos between the cylinder banks. It is also the only unit with a 48 volt system. The latter is, res- is responsible for greatly simplifying the timing setup of the engine compared to its aforementioned predecessor. <laughs> The engine's advanced systems make it the best performer on this list, reaching a specific output in excess of 100 horsepower in a diesel. However, the EA898 was designed to be Euro 6 compliant. It is also made after Volkswagen's diesel emission scandal. All these forced Volkswagen to use lightweight designs all around and to reduce the oil pressure, among other non-cheating tricks. Unfortunately, the engine is neither reliable nor durable as a result. <laughs>